to Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, please. Luke chapter 22. We're going to skip across this chapter and we're just going to pick some points out of it this evening. And we trust that God will speak through his word to hearts this evening. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. Let's just read a few verses, then keep your Bible open as we go through the scripture. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked you anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Let us pray. Father, we ask you, in the worthy and almighty, most wonderful, gracious and good name of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would now, Lord, move in every car to every person and every heart. You know the condition. You know the position. You know each and every one of us. And as our faces differ, Lord, so do our needs. We thank you, Father, for your grace and for your mercy, for your loving kindness, and we thank you for your goodness toward us. Every day in our lives, Lord, we live, we live and move, and we have our being in you. And so, Father, to that end, we pray that thy spirit would see fit to speak to every one of us, and Lord, that you would bless those that need blessed, encourage those that need encouraged, instruct those that need instructed. And Lord, if there's ones who are wearied in their hearts and stri went astray from you, and those who have been wearied in their hearts and went even into the world, we pray you draw them back tonight. Lord, those who are weak in faith, strengthen them ere they go into this world. And we pray, O oh God, that in the name of the Lord Jesus, if there's one or some that are here tonight, Lord, that do not know you as their own Lord and personal Savior, we pray that you would save them by thy sovereign grace and call them and draw them and quicken them to behold the Lamb of God who bore away their sin. Have thine own way, Lord, and glorify thy name. We ask it for Jesus' sake and for his glory. Amen. Amen. We find here that this is the night in which the Lord Jesus is betrayed and then arrested. Betrayed by Judas Iscariot and arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Take note here. This night the Lord takes them to that sacred garden. He takes his disciples while Judas is away to do his dirty deeds, and betray the master. But notice here, Peter comes into vision, and Peter is brought into view in our reading. Here our master has just broken bread, and there he has taken from the cup with them, and he has had the last supper, as it were, and he starts to open his heart when the devil Judas had went out. 
Notice this. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have thee, that he may sift thee as wheat. Notice here two things to be assured of. One is this, is that the devil wants to destroy the soul and the heart of every man and of every woman. And secondly, we can be assured of this, that if you are wheat and not chaff, in other words, if you are the elect of Christ, of God Almighty, and you are His and saved by sovereign grace, there the Father will tell you that you are wheat and not chaff. The old hymn writer once wrote, The Spirit answers to the blood. The Spirit answers to the blood. The Spirit answers to the blood and tells me, I am born of God. Do you have that assurance tonight in your heart? Do you know that you belong to Christ? Have you made your calling and your election sure? And have you been to the foot of the old rugged cross? And have you come under the fountain of blood which flowed from Emmanuel's veins? Are you washed in the blood? And are you saved tonight? And do you know it? Here Peter is being sifted as wheat because he is Christ's. Yet Peter would deny him thrice shortly after the Lord had told him these words. In the original text, this is the way it would read. All the disciples are there, bar Judas, with Peter among them. And as he looks at Peter, he means for every one of them, Simon, Simon, behold Satan, Half the tire to have you all. But I have prayed for thee. And he points it to Simon Peter. Does Christ not pray for all of his own? Of course he does. But in this instance, he's pointing it out to Simon Peter that he is about to go through a trial and a testing time and that Christ and the prayers of Christ is that which will see him through the darkest of moments in the life of Peter. I can assure you on the word of God that we have an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our, which has not been touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin we are told that our great high priest the risen, exalted, ascended, glorified Christ is at the right hand of the majesty on high and there he intercedes for all of his own. There he prays for you and there he prays for me, believer. And there he is interceding on our behalf and you'll find in your darkest of moments in your hardest of times, in your weariest and longest of nights, you'll find that the prayers, the promises, and the power of the blood of Christ is that which will bring you through the darkest times of your life. I can tell you, friend, I've tried them many times. We have run in our lives after this thing and that thing and the other thing, trying to fulfill our lives. But when a man and a woman truly comes to know Christ as their own Lord and personal Savior, when they know him with an intimate manner and fashion, they can say, now none but Christ can satisfy. None other name for me. There's love and life and lasting joy. Lord Jesus found in thee. I could say I tried the broken cisterns, Lord, but all ah, the waters failed. Even as I stooped to drink, they fled and mocked me as I willed. Now none but Christ can satisfy. 
none other name for me. There's love and life and lasting joy. Lord Jesus, find in the old oh, taste, friend, taste, unbeliever, taste, unseen man and woman, taste, and see that the Lord is a good. He says, I have meat that you know not of. Oh, there's more in Christ that meets the eye. There's more in Christ than you can ever know. And only by coming to Christ and Calvary's tree will you ever be reconciled to God in him. Take note here. He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now we know that Peter, this very same night, he denies Christ thrice and the cock crew. Here three times he denies the Lord Jesus Christ. Did Christ know he would deny him? Didn't he tell him that? And Peter didn't know his own heart. Peter couldn't tell his own heart. Christ knew. Christ knows your heart. Christ knows the thought of your heart. The deep inner recesses of your heart. Christ knows the future. And Christ knows your heart. And Christ knows it all. Oh, I give him glory and I praise him. That he knew me on Calvary's tree. Yet he loved me. And gave himself for me. And if you're a believer tonight. You can take heart and rejoice. That Christ knows you also. Here he tells him you will deny me three times. Notice Peter's reply. Notice Peter's reply. He says Lord I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Now Jesus is only after telling him, I know your heart and you're going to deny me. Before the cock will crow, it will be three times, Peter. Here, Peter, he's saying, Peter, listen, you don't know your own heart. Peter's going, I'm ready, I'm ready. The way in the Greek text is, it keeps on. He's not saying it just the once. And as Jesus is speaking to him, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. No, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Friend, there's something in that to tell us as Christians to wait on the Lord, to wait on his timing, to wait until he gives the word and to take the word into your heart and run with it. Here, Peter, first of all, we have point one. We have Peter's self-confidence. I am ready both to go to prison and unto death. Peter's self-confidence. The Lord says, I have prayed for thee, Peter. Peter says, I'm ready. Isn't it not the, the state of the human heart? The human flesh? The human flesh is opposed to everything of the Spirit of God. Speaks of nothing but our carnality and our death and depravity, our complete and total inability to save ourselves. And here Christ speaks to him, and out of his own carnality, here he says, I'm ready. Self-confidence. There's many people who think that they're ready for heaven. There's many people who think they're ready for glory. And they think they're ready because maybe they go to church or chapel or whatever it may be. They think they're ready because, well, I'm a good person. I've done nobody any harm, and they think they're ready. Self-confidence. Self-confidence is nothing but the pride of man's puffed-up imaginations and the puffed-out feathers of man. He puffs himself out like a bird on a wire. I am ready. And Peter, he said the same. Is there someone here tonight, and you said, oh, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I go to my church. Friend, let me tell you, just around before Christmas, I uh, buried a, a lady, lovely Christian lady. 
And at the graveside, I spoke to her brother. An aged man, and there he came to me and shook me by the hand. And I had spoken and didn't miss and hit the wall, as we say. And he shook my hand and he says, thank you for your words. And I said, are you saved? Are you saved? And he said to me, yes, I'm saved. And he walked away from me. And I asked a relative, that man, is he saved? And he says, no, he's not. I said, he told me he was saved. I bawled me and said he was saved. And he says, no. He goes to church and his minister told him he's all right. They tell him they're, they're saved by their denomination. And they're saved by their affiliation. And here their self-confidence in church and in religion tells man and puffs up his mind and his heart and tells them they're saved because they go to church. Friend, I can tell you, there's no church saves. And if you're not born of the Spirit and washed in the blood of Christ, trusting only, solely, uniquely, totally, and completely on Him and His work alone that He paid your debt, then you're not saved, friend. And you will be in a devil's hell, lost for all time and eternity, without God, without Christ, and you'll be without hope in this world. So are you saved? Are you saved? And notice here, we have Peter's self-confidence. Listen to what Paul writes in Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. He writes, not of works of righteousness which we have done. Notice, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. He came and he saved us. I can tell you, friend, if Christ had not come, if Christ had not taken the great stoop into this sin-cursed world, then you and I would be lost for all time and throughout all eternity. Notice here, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. The apostle tells us in Ephesians 3, verses 8 and 9, well, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Notice by grace. Are you saved through faith? And that not of yourselves. Notice, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So can I ask you tonight, what are you trusting in, hoping in, and relying on? Works of the flesh, works of self, I am ready. Sure, God, don't you let us all into your heaven. Friend, I can tell you, God will only let those in for whom he gave his son and he paid the price for and they accepted his blood. They and they alone will find they are in the glory and the kingdom of God. Make it sure tonight, make it sure tonight that you're saved by the grace of God and trusting in the blood of the Lamb. Self-confidence. Notice what Jesus says as we go down our reading. Verse 37. For I say unto you that this, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me, he said. Notice in Christ. He was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. Notice what Jesus said. Things must be accomplished in me. Notice accomplished in me, he says to Peter. Not accomplished in Ken, the preacher. 
the pastor, the Christian, not accomplished in these men on the stage, Glenn the elder. No, friend, accomplished in Christ. Accomplished in Christ and in none other. It's not accomplished in Buddha. It's not accomplished in Muhammad. It's not accomplished in Confucius, nor any of them. It's accomplished in Christ and in Christ alone. Notice here, friend, Jesus said, accomplished in me, as it is written, he was numbered with the transgressors. The Lord Jesus here is quoting Isaiah chapter 53 as the prophet, as it were, stood under the cross with a spirit of prophecy. Isaiah 53 is that saying of the cross, speaking of the crucifixion of Christ. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And Yahweh hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Father laid on the Son the iniquity of us all. And oh, he took our sin. But listen. He's numbered with the transgressors in Isaiah 53 and verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many. He bare the sin of many. Are you one of the many tonight? Are you one of the many? Are you one who be bore your sin on the tree? Are you sure of it? Do you know it? Do you feel it? Have you experienced it? Are you one of the many that Christ bore your sin? He made intercession for the transgressors. Notice he's numbered with the transgressors and he made intercession for us, the transgressors. Here the Lord Jesus in Luke chapter 22. Luke 22 again. Notice Peter's self-confidence is shot right down. Christ says it's accomplished in me, Peter, and I'm praying for you. And I will carry your sin and your burden. And so self-confidence was the first backward step of little side slippings that brought a great backsliding in the life of Peter that night. Notice this here, verse 39. And he, and he came out and went as he want, was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray ye, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And, it, and he was with them, withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if I be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping with sorrow. Dear, help them. Dear, help them. Here we have the Christ of God, the sinless, spotless, impeccable, beautiful Son of God in the garden in distress. Here he's sweating great drops of blood falling to the ground in Gethsemane. Gethsemane means God's olive press or olive press. Gethsemane, Gethsemane is where they crush olives. And here the olive of God, the precious son, the beloved one, was crushed in God's olive press. And there was fruitful oil, of the sweat like great drops of blood which came from the brow of the wonderful, beautiful Savior. And when he gets back, 
Sure, there they are. It shows you what's in us. Nothing. Nothing is in us. I can tell you something, friend. All this, I chose Jesus and I choose him here. Friend, I'll tell you, there was nothing in you and there was nothing in me that ever wanted him. He chose us and he came and he redeemed us. We'd be too busy sleeping. The sleep of death. And Christ came and gave us life. Christ came to give us the gift of salvation. Christ came to rescue, to ransom, and to redeem us. Notice here, friend, he comes and they're sleeping, little sidestepping for Peter toward his backsliding is found in verse 46. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Self-confidence was one. Lack of prayer was two. Lack of prayer was two. Here we find these disciples, including Peter, are sleeping. And Christ has already told them the dangers that he's in. He tells them, now you pray. What does Peter do? Oh, this is too hard for me to take, Jesus. I'm just going to have to roll into a ball here and nearly die. But I'll just go a wee sleep here. So sorrowful I am. Yet Christ, Christ is in the garden with him. And he is bearing it all. Aren't we like that? Isn't that what we're like? When the time's come and we're told pray, pray and pray, our lack of prayer causes us. Our lack of prayer causes us to feel further from Christ and to go into a stupor and a sleep that when we are prayerless, then we feel hopeless and we feel godless. Seven prayerless days makes one Christian week. Friend, don't be through praying what you're going through, but rather pray through it. Don't be through praying what you're going through, but rather pray through it. Remember, your next prayer could be the prayer of breakthrough. Notice here, thirdly and moving quickly, time is flying. We have Judas Iscariot comes, verse 47. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude... And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. And Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, we shall smite with the sword. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Notice here, Judas kissed the Lord. Judas, the old blackguard, the betrayer. Christ allowed Judas to kiss his cheek, his beautiful face. Oh, how close you can think you are to the door of heaven and still go to hell. Notice here, thirdly and quickly, verse 54. And they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed him afar off. Peter followed him afar off. Now note this. Here's Peter's vacillation. Peter's self-confidence. Peter's lack of prayer. Peter's vacillation. What does it mean? Vacillation means to be too double-minded. It means to be all one way 
and then the other. You know you're not too sure and then you jump all in with two feet and you're sooner out than you are as quick as you are in. Vacillation. To go like a reed in the wind. And Peter's vacillation is this. That first from verse 33. Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and death. Now he's following him afar off. Two feet right in, I'm going. Two feet right out, I'm wandering away far, I'm hiding. I'm speaking to someone tonight, and you're two-minded about Christ. You're double-minded in your ways. I'm struggling with the idea I'm struggling with the thoughts. I'm, I'm struggling. I, I know that I'm, I'm feeling something here that I must be saved. And I, I just can't help it. I, I don't know what to do. You're halting between two opinions. Friends, listen. You need to make your choice. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Christ has died for you, then he's worthy. He's worthy of everything you are and have. Maybe there's a Christian and you've been following him afar off. There's another little way that you'll backslide. You go in your self-confidence. You start lack of prayer. You follow afar off. Peter followed afar off. He fought, cut off the ear of the high priest servant, and then he fled. He fought and he fled. Many have been in service for Christ, fighting the good fight of faith. And all of a sudden, trouble comes. Disappointment, disillusionment, you might say. Have you ever had any disappointments? And disillusionments and discouragements, absolutely yes, a million of them. But I can tell you one thing, I know he's praying for me. And I continue on in his grace, knowing that I belong to him and that he belongs to me. So here Peter has, his third one is vacillation, moving quickly. His fourth one is his fellowship. His fellowship, verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were sat down together, Peter sat among them. There's Peter's fellowship now. That night his fellowship was with the beautiful person of the Son of God. That night he looked eyeball to eyeball in the face of Jesus. There with his fellowship of other believers. And now he started to let himself go little backslidings and slippings. And now he's heating himself at the fire. The fire of the world. The fire of the devil. And that's what happens to many believers They like to warm themselves at the hands of the world. The devil's fire. They like it there because it's comfortable. They like it there because, well, I can be friends with both. And they like it there because their hearts went cold. And the world calls them. And not only did he warm his hands at the fire, he took his seat and he sat among them. You see, friends, sin will always take you further than you ever want to go. Keep you longer than you ever want to stay. And cost you more than you ever want to pay. Peter sat down among them. That's his fellowship. Christian, watch your fellowship. Young person, watch your fellowship. If you're in a a so-called Christian company and they're full of gossip and nonsense and 
rubbish, some worldliness, get rid of them. And if you're in fellowship with the world, leave them. Get into fellowship of men and women that love him and want to serve him. Here we find now the great backsliding comes after Peter sat down. In verse 56, But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man also was with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Did you not used to be a Christian? Did you not used to be in church and used to be out witnessing for Jesus? It's the world does. Was it not you? Huh? And many go, oh, listen, I'm embarrassed by him. I don't know him. I know him not. For I can tell you, I am not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause. Maintain the honor of his word and the glory of his cross. I'm unafraid and I'm unashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ and all who think wrong of me because I know where he saved me, where he found me, and where he's lifted me from. And I know he paid my debt that I could not pay. So I close with this. Thank you for your attention and for coming tonight. So many people. Notice here, he does deny the Lord three times. Verse 58, and then in verse 60, he said, I don't know him. I wasn't with him. In verse 57, the denial of Christ is Peter's great backsliding. Peter's faith is gone. But Christ has prayed for him. I can tell you, you might go into the world, friend. And you might fall out of love with him. And you might have family who are in the world and fallen out of love with him too. But if they are his, I can tell you one thing. The prayers of Christ, the prayers of our great high priest are greater and are stronger than all the throes and wiles of the devil and all the, the very things that he wants to hold God's children down with. I can tell you, the prayers of Christ will prevail. So pray, pray on, pray through, and don't be through praying. Peter, first of all, he started walking afar off. He finds himself standing at the fire, then sitting among them. Reminds me of Psalm 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man who walketh not. Notice, who walketh not. How are you walking? In the ways of the sinners, nor standeth in the seat of the scornful, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And brothers and sisters, I can tell you, if you read that Psalm 1 and verse 1, Peter did that, and he wasn't blessed. Peter did that and he wasn't blessed. And I can tell you this, but when Christ came and he found him on the shores of Galilee, read John 21 when you go home. He says, Simon Peter, do you love me? If you've heard anything tonight, may you hear the voice of Christ ask you, Christian, believer, Unbeliever, do you love me? Do you love me? Brothers and sisters, do you love him? May God bless his word to us this evening.